everyone this is ginger with gingerberry creek and today's tutorial is going to be about uh hat uh the hat brims and the top hats uh, i'm working on this little pumpkin here and in in your instructions here you have to do a hat so i want to show you how you go about uh working with the hat brims and attaching the two pieces together. So uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to have um, an X-Acto knife that makes uh, cutting the slit a lot easier. Um, and then you're going to need, uh, like for the darker fabric, I use a marking chalk. Uh, or if you're using a lighter fabric you can use one of the disappearing ink pens uh, you'll need your two pieces and then you'll you know you may need your pattern piece here uh, the other thing you're going to need is your uh, needle with your embroidery thread uh, and uh, I use a turning tool for turning the brim right side out and then I uh, also use like a nice little uh, sturdy ruler for helping me uh, with my line here, cutting a straight line, all of that, and some pins to pin everything together. So um, what I've done is this is already, it's double layer here, it's already been sewn, and now and this one I have sewn and turned right side out and already have uh, stuffed it. Uh, I didn't stuff it all the way to the edge. I left a little bit because I want to, you know, end up closing this up. So um, on this one, I've already here marked my line, but as you can see with the pattern, you know, it is, you pretty much, uh, if it doesn't tell you how long or approximately how long uh, it'll depend on how you sewn your piece here uh, best to use your piece to measure or your pattern piece and just make it slightly just don't go all the way out to the edges but you can use either one of those to get the correct uh, size for your slit uh, so now what I'm going to do is I've, I've already marked it I made sure it's the center. I've tried to center it up here um, from the edges on this side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my straight edge here and just set this down. And then I'm going to go ahead and mar, uh, cut the slit um, along my straight edge here. Just make sure you keep an eye on where your markings are. In fact, it might be a good idea to make a mark out so you don't go too far, uh, you know, uh, too far past the edge here that you want. So here I'm going to go ahead and line up. And then I'm just going to uh, cut through both of these layers. And then I'm going to turn this right side out. So make sure you have a good cutting surface as well. You don't want to cut up your table or anything like that. So make sure you have like a uh, one of these uh, mats to cut. So now I've cut through both layers. And I'm just going to uh, now turn this right side out. Try not to be too rough with it because you don't want to stretch that opening out too much. Because um, once you stretch that wool felt, it will not go back uh, to its original shape. So try to be a little gentle with it. It's a little awkward doing it with when it has the two slits, but you'll get it here. All right, so. Once I have it turned right side out, I usually kind of go around and push with my thumb or finger um, to kind of push out the edge a little bit. 
and get it straightened up. Okay. The other thing I like to do is use the dowel that comes with my turning tool um, and run it because it's got that tapered in. I like to run it and push it, push out, make sure the edge is all pushed out um, to give it a nice good shape. Just be careful not to push too hard because you don't want to poke a hole in your fabric, your felt. All right, the next thing is, is I will kind of roll and um, roll these seams. You'll see that in the um, pattern instructions. It's for setting the seams, and there is a separate tutorial on uh, what this is all about. So just do that. So now we have that opening, and here is our other piece. So what we want to do is insert this opening part into here. And then I kind of fold it back like that. So this is the inside here. And if your opening is too small, you can uh, split it just a little bit more. I have a tendency to leave it a little smaller because uh, sometimes when you have them too too big then it's hard for them to uh, for you to sew you know and catch the, all of the fabric and you end up getting a gap so you have three layers here you have uh, the two layers of the brim which are right so there's one layer of the brim there's the second layer of the brim and then there's the top part of the hat so you have three edges that you need to try to line up um, and the, try to line all the edges together the best you can. And then what you'll need to do is uh, pin it just to hold it. We need to sew those um, edges together and then we're going to close it up and sew it uh, shut. So I just use a couple of pins and uh, line up both sides here. Let's keep messing with it. There we go. bring the three make sure you have all three edges before you pin because you want to make sure that they're you're gonna catch all of these edges or all of these layers together so we're just I'm just gonna sew around this for now and then I'll show you what I do so I've got my uh, two strands of uh, black BMC thread I've knotted one end of it and that's uh, to kind of hold it in place uh, till I, I usually try to leave a long thread tail but uh, I like to knot the end because then it holds the threads together while I'm working with them. So then what I do is I hold starting at one edge here, one end. I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna kind of pretty much do a running stitch to hold the, the piece, all the layers together. And like I said, I usually keep a tail to knot off with. Now, when I do the running stitch here, there's a separate tutorial just on running stitch. Uh, like if you're doing it for um, wings or something like that. But like when you're doing and wanting all three layers, you just it's just to hold all of this together so it doesn't have to be nice and neat. So on this particular one, I'm just going to do a running stitch where I go into the fabric, push over 
here and then pull make sure you keep that long thread tail now if there's too much of a gap here you can come back so it's almost like a back stitch there and then go forward again and you're doing that about a quarter inch down from the uh, the edge of all three pieces here so you just want to uh, do this running stitch all the way around catching all three layers and then the next step will be to close uh, close up the opening now you may need to adjust as you go pull up a layer and you know get it situated that's why I only usually on these things I only use a couple of pins because I'm usually always having to adjust a little bit uh, the the layers Alright. These corners or these ends can be a little tricky because you can actually miss uh, one of the layers if you're not careful so be sure you're bringing that up and getting all of the layers and you may want to do a smaller stitch um, instead of a big long stitch here at the end um, that's what I normally do is take smaller stitches to make sure I locked in over on the side here but once I have that locked in, then I continue doing my bigger um, running stitch, my longer stitches. Because we're just wanting to make sure we hold all the layers together. And then we're going to close it up otherwise. So it doesn't have to be like real real small stitches like when you're doing like a decorative back stitching then you do smaller stitches and it has to be a lot nicer and neater whereas this we don't have to do that where because it's all going to be hidden just always make sure that you're getting all three layers okay I'm coming around to the end here. Still making sure I've got all my layers. So I don't want to accidentally miss a layer. And then what I'll do is I'm going to uh, make sure that I knot off down here and before I do the opening All right, so I'm going to do another couple stitches here at the end and these are going to be the smaller stitches like I said because I want to make sure I get those that that corner or that end of it and then the last stitch here will be right next to that long thread tail so now I'm gonna go ahead and knot this together and uh, when I do that I usually do a double knot so do your double knot but don't clip these threads okay not uh, not the one that leave the one attached to your needle this other one that's in my hand I'm going to cut it down some and then I'm going to push it into the inside and hide it so you can see I've got about an inch left there and now I'm going to put it down inside of this uh, opening 
and now I'm going to bring all of this together and I've still got this threaded here and so now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, whip stitching this uh, opening closed All right, so now my thread is on the outside of the opening and I'm going to do start doing a whip stitch to close this all up. So just bring it together here and then whip stitch this part closed. So you've sewn the three layers together, so your two hat brim layers and then your one uh, top hat layer uh, or hat top layer um, and then now we've got around we've done that and now we're just gonna sew this closed and then this uh, will be complete now if you needed to you could add more stuffing into this before you finish before you close this up and finish up if you felt that it needed a little bit more sometimes you you can or if it's not closing up because you put too much in then take a little bit out just close this up this makes it nice and neat so when you uh, glue it to your primitive doll then it's all nice and neat and sewn closed there's no opening or anything I just sew this close. go about done here and then I'm gonna knot off and hide my thread tails like I do any other time so at the end here I'm just gonna do kind of like what I always do which is make a double knot I'm gonna make a that's my first knot. I'm going to go into the same area uh, and then put another knot with that one. So that makes it a double knot. And now, since it's already threaded, I just go ahead, insert, run it down, and then clip my thread tails. Of course, like always, just be careful to to not clip your hat or your th your uh, fabric and so now this is all sewn together that's the bottom part and it's put together and then you would have your hat band ready to help cover up what you've done here you would put that around and hot glue it down and that is how you do the hat brim and the hat top and then join them together so thank you for joining and watching and uh, please be sure to check out my other tutorials for some of the other techniques that are used in my primitive doll patterns and if you take a moment please like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.